Oh, I think we're live now. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are doing okay. And today, it's going to be a little more of a... Santa Corsa Competition and Arch Life Cup at Low Fuel Motorsports. Been having a lot of fun with it. Too much fun, really. And uh, we're going to do two races today. And tomorrow, depending on the time I have, uh, I might do my first race at uh, LFM Pro. I think it would be interesting. Of course, it's not going to be top split. But it's, I think it's going to be okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the... The thumbnail for today, uh, I, I kind of enjoy doing those thumbnails. They're totally different from everything that is out there. It's not just a, a screenshot. It's actually, I thought of it, you know, I'm going to emulate a poster. And sometimes the posters are just too cool. Oh, hello, everybody. Hey, guy named Kent, how are you doing? I'm just going to uh, share the stream. Uh, on Twitch and on our Discord, so everybody joins in, and then we're gonna go exactly at it. Uh, is up no field order sports ECC Nord Life Cup. So tomorrow it's gonna be Imola if I do it at um, uh, for the Pro Cup. I'm not gonna be anywhere close to decent, but uh, tomorrow I'll train a little bit. I'm still not sure if I'm going to do the McLaren or if I'm going to do the Ferrari, but I think I'm going to do the McLaren. Bon dia, Hyper Sim Racing. Make it. I just need to share it on Discord, and that's basically it. Um, yeah, and we definitely need some, some training. Uh, hey, everyone. Stream is live, and uh, off we go. Man, I, I really like this thumbnail. It's so good. It is really good. I, I'm really happy with the thumbnail. Oh, for some reason, the Twitch, it's not working. No, boo. And I can't restart it, otherwise it just kills it. Okay, uh, tomorrow I'll fix it. It's fine. It's fine. Tomorrow I will fix it. It is totally okay. Right. So, here we go. We're going to do... We're going to go directly. I've been playing way too much Fallout New Vegas, to be fair. I'm, I'm going to try to do a set of content with it. I've been having a lot of fun with, with the Fallout franchise lately. New Vegas is good. Three is crap. <laughs> <laughs> And this time, I'm actually getting. I'm I, I, this time. I, I'm actually getting. Um, how can I say? I'm actually getting hardcore. I always play New Vegas on hardcore because I, I do enjoy myself um, a good challenge. But this time, I think it just clicked, and I haven't played New Vegas in ten years, ten eleven years. It it completely just clicked. Though New Vegas has a lot of problems, I must say. Uh, you can't really play that game without being modded just for stability. And it's, it's kind of sad. It, But, you know, that's Bethesda games or Bethesda stuff for you. It's not even 64 bits. So uh, can, it only uses like 2 gigs for some reason. But there's a mod for 4 gigs, which is the maximum of 32-bit uh, allocation. And even so, it is bad. There's a bunch of stability things. The, the 4 gig uh, update or 4 gig uh, mod does allow it to run decently at 144, 120 FPS. It's not good visually at all in terms of uh, draw distances. It gets really weird. Gets really, really weird. Hey, Jurekov. Yep, yeah, regard. How did the main antagonist woman survived? Uh, oh, you mean the one that started the thing in the beginning? There is a giveaway. I think it's on episode 7. 
when one of the guys gets shot in uh, in the neck and the guy is cured. There's a giveaway there. So if you see that cure effect and the other guy has a response, I'm not going to give any spoilers out. That answer, that, uh, uh, you know, the response that the other guy says, uh, Maximus, it's likely the, the reason why uh, that person survived. Or it could be something else. She could have been working for, uh, for vault and got access to something. Yeah, I think she is. She might be. She might be. Not totally sure. She might be. Or it could be some sort of uh, serum. Or she got... Uh, it's unlikely that she got the thawed. Because otherwise... Yeah, it's unlikely she got these thoughts. Otherwise, she would get older. And she didn't get older at all. She's a cyborg. What, a synth? Could be. She could be a synth. But synths haven't been, like, shown in the in the series. So I'm not sure if she, she would be a synth. Nor I would guess that the... The, uh, the Institute would be operating in the West Coast, because the Institute is East Coast alone for the Massachusetts Commonwealth. That would be for second season. I think she's dead, but then again, we saw the other guy is surviving. There's a bunch of things on in terms of lore that kind of breaks the lore in Fallout New Vegas and other Fallouts. For example, the positioning of Shady Sands, it's not correct. Shady Sands is somewhere close to San Francisco, a little bit south in between the in between Nevada and the coast. And not in the in a boneyard of Los Angeles. Hey Roman, how are you doing? Oh, uh, Zhurikov has a question about uh, one uh, one character in... Um, I'm not going to spoil anything. She has a, a question... He has a question about uh, one of the characters in Fallout series. And he was asking how that that, uh, that person survived. And I, I answer it without, you know... Without spoiling anything. And there's a, you know, a bunch of lore in the Fallout New Vegas that's... Ah, crap. I'm getting around, so anyways. That kind of gets broken. Not just New Vegas, it's also established, very established lore in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. And New Vegas as well. Because uh, Shady Sands isn't supposed to be there in the middle of the, the Boneyard. Uh, so the Boneyard is is the, the, the city of um, Los Angeles. For those of you who never played it, I'm probably not spoiling anything because this this is like 30-year-old lore now. Uh, Fallout series starts with a bunch of vault dwellers, but we follow just one. Going out of a vault, uh, vault 13 to search for a, uh, a chip. And the only direction it has is a, a vault called Vault 15. It's basically on the same... Um, I forgot the name. Uh, it's, it's on the same latitude, right? So, he goes there, and in the middle of going there, there's he finds a town called Shady Sands, the town that is founded by a bunch of people that came out of Vault 15 and people around it. In other vaults, in other places, tribals, and yada yada yada. Right? That town ends up becoming what is the NCR. Right? But that town, just like if Vault 15 uh, was west of Shady Sands, sorry, Vault 13 was the west of Shady Sands, and Vault 13 was south of south of Los Angeles, but into uh, in more in more into Nevada or east way outside of uh, any big cities north of what is called bakersfield 
ends up being Necropolis, where a bunch of ghouls are. It's not. It's really not far away from a from a, a military base that is in the middle of the desert. What is the desert or the wasteland? Right. The town of Shady Sands is even more uh, east, so that means it's more into the wasteland, and they end up becoming the NCR. The, the town is renamed NCR, or maybe it gets moved. I don't know. But the, tar the town is Shady Sands. Ends up becoming the NCR, which is the California Republic. And in a town, in the in a series, Shady Sands is said to be to be inside, or we see just a hole. Uh, Shady Sands ends up being in the middle of um, of Los Angeles, which doesn't make any sense because the towns that were in the middle of Los Angeles were basically Aditum. I think it's the name of the town, Aditum. There's a bunch of areas like Gun Runners, uh, the areas where the the Death Claws are, and there's also the Children of the Cathedral. And south of it, uh, it's called, there's a place called the Glow. But that place, all of those places are inside of Los Angeles or in the vicinity of Los Angeles. Vault 13, Vault 15, and and uh, and, and Shady Sands are nowhere close. And uh, the series puts Shady Sands bang on in the middle of uh, the old Los Angeles area. No, 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 it's not in Nevada. It's nowhere, uh, it's not in Nevada. So it doesn't make any sense. There's also other situations, especially with the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood of Steel themselves were a bunch of twats. However, following Vault 1, uh, sorry, Fallout 1, following the events of Fallout 1, the guy that takes care of it wants to become um, more open, at least with the, uh, with the chapter inside of... Um, What's the name of it? Uh, inside of uh, California, wants to have like a, a more open Brotherhood of Steel because Brotherhood of Steel are basically techno hoarders. So they go to old places, they p pick up a bunch of stuff, and then they hoard it. They don't share the technology. Either that be the old technology that was built or blueprints. And uh, the Brotherhood of Steel, for those of you who don't know, are basically the remnants of a certain army of the United States Army, so they were they were stationed at uh, Mariposa, Bla ba uh, Mariposa Base, and then the the bombs fell, and they uh, or before the bombs uh, the before, before the uh, the bombs falling down, they essentially rebelled against the United States Army, but they were army themselves. So essentially, the Brother is still our army, or the old army. Or at least part of it. And the chapter they show in the series, they don't, it doesn't make sense considering the lore of the chapter that is present in California. I would say that uh, the East Coast uh, Brother still kind of makes sense. Even though it's, it's a really bad basis for it, it kind of makes sense. But someone on the series really doesn't in a way that how big of a twats they are because of the chapter that was created after Fallout 1. You know, it's really interesting, the the lore, but there's a bunch of stuff that breaks in, in the series that I, I don't understand. It's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be needed to be retconned in some way to make sense for the lore that was already established. I understand that uh, it's not possible to do two one to one um, transfers like it has it is in the book, but the lore is actually really is uh, extensive and it really doesn't need those things. There's an image at the end uh, of New Vegas. People were saying, "Oh, where's the airport?" That kind of makes sense that New Vegas is like that because you know new, the New Vegas we get in the video games. It, you know, it, it has a video game size. It needs to be really compact. It doesn't make sense in reality for uh, for uh, an airport to be that close to um, 
to a town, it could be a little bit further away, just like real life, because of the strip towards the airport. It's like six or seven kilometers, and even from a distance, it wouldn't be seen, and you would see a couple of, uh, you know, places which happen, but that maybe needs to be rewritten. I do enjoy the lore of the vaults. The, the lore that they presented in the vaults makes a lot of sense, though. Uh, the lore in Fallout 1 and 2 wasn't retconned. The lore in Fallout 3 was, especially with the FEV. Because the FEV was supposed to be a creation that was only on the West Coast. It was being developed by, uh, I think it's West Tech. And it was only in one place, but apparently everybody in their, in their uh, according to Fallout 3, everybody and their moms got access to, uh, to that. And I, it didn't make sense. It was to be... It was supposed to be Super Secret Squirrel, but then on Fallout 3, uh, you know, there's a vault dedicated to it. Kind of stupid where the mutants come out. The super mutants, not even ghouls, super mutants come out of, and super mutants are kind of special in the way they are developed. So it doesn't make any sense. And super mutants are basically a creation of, uh, of the Master in Fallout 1. And in Fallout 3, they are basically created in, the, in, the, in that vault, like, 100 years, 200 years before, before the Master. For me, it doesn't make any sense at all, but it is what it is. Hey, Game Tech. I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, X-Men is X-Men, I guess. You don't need... You really don't need to. You don't need to care, I guess. But yeah. It's, it's super fascinating, that series, though. I'm kind of... Eh, does it really need to be like that? Do you need it to do that? But I was super happy with the way they actually explored the, the humor and... In the lore, it's not, it's not easy to, to recreate a series that was basically video games. And then you needed to do, do to do for a, a new group that essentially never watched it, never, no, doesn't know what is Fallout. It needs to do it in a way that is TV enjoyable. It's not easy at all, and I think uh, Nolan did it really well. I was in, at certain points thinking, yeah, this is this is absolutely Fallout, and it's not about the setting. And one, another thing that I really enjoyed that puts me off so much out of Bethesda Fallout is that the, you know, oh my god, this is the 50s but in the future kind of thing that Bethesda had wasn't really present in wasn't really pr present there at least not at the uh, at the extent you know it's the 50s but it's in the future it's something that you see from the start but it is not the setting you know the setting itself that is not the central part of the setting the aesthetic is not the central part of the, the setting you know what happened to earth and what the what the hell is going on is part of the setting Bethesda, but Bethesda took that, you know, this is the setting now, the 50s are the setting, and we put, like, uh, the Holocaust and the post-apocalyptic world around it, made it really annoying. And I think Nolan did it, uh, did it really well in a way. Yeah, we understand that, you know, retrofuturistic future, the 50s are still a bit of a aesthetic, but the aesthetic is just there to give flavor. It's not there to be central to you, you know? Uh, we need to remember that these series are not for us. I agree and disagree at the same time. Hey, Ritual Horse. You know, the series... They have to be for the fans, but the fans cannot be catered exclusively. 
Otherwise, you know, Last of Us. I, I never seen Last of Us, but otherwise, Last of Us, it it would be just things that you know the game players didn't didn't enjoy, or you know, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, Lord of the Rings. Or Game of Thrones, and Game of Thrones, you know, fell down after season five because there wasn't anything to rely on. Of course, everything, a lot of things need to be abridged for the sake of of that. Uh, you know, being a part on a TV show, events disappear, characters are disappear, or they are actually condensed together. Certain things have to be retconned, and makes kind of sense when it makes sense for the the sake of brevity but in other ways that's why i'm saying this about fallout uh certain geographic local places that are very well established doesn't make uh, they don't really make any sense i know a way to retcon shady sands specifically and even new vegas Kind of new. One of the choices of New Vegas kind of makes sense for how New Vegas is at the end. Hello, Strawberry Fields, are you there? I was supposed was doing everything he could. Yeah, the series is really cool. It it has the it is it has multiple personalities, just like the just like the game. And uh, there are situations where it's incredibly dark and gritty, and in other places, it's just one of the most stupidest things, fun things that you're gonna have ever seen. Yeah, I'm doing great, dude. It that, that, that's why I enjoyed the series because it, it got that it, it got that especially Fallout 2. It got the the humor of Fallout 2 really correct and the uh, the tone. Cuz if you ever play Fallout 2, there's there are situations in Fallout 2 where you talk to people and it's incredibly deep and dark and gritty and they want to kill everybody, like, and it's not like ah, I'm a murderer, nothing like that. It's like it's very much in a way of terrorizing, of uh, destroying a group. Um, Fallout series is streaming at uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah, but uh, the problem is Bethesda owns it. It's not just Microsoft, it's Bethesda has the controls, has the keys, and Todd Howard is a bit of a twat, to be fair. And what I say what I mean by this is that he's incredibly petty. Why are you defending, bro? Thank you. He's incredibly petty, and some of the decisions he took, especially after Fallout New Vegas, it was 
it was in the case of like I am the owner, I can do whatever I want because I own the uh, I own uh, the franchise. Because you guys have to remember, Fallout One and Two, even though they didn't sell much, were actually very well received by RPG players. It, it was a dated game, right? But it was very well received by by RPG players. Fallout Two was actually sell. Uh, it sold okay, not as much as Fallout 1. Uh, it had issues, but for me, it's a much better game. Fallout 3, when it came out, it actually sold a lot, but it was, you know, while technically more advanced, at, from a point of view of Fallout, it is a much worse game. Like, much, much worse. Then, Obs uh, Obsidian, which essentially are the old guys that know how to do the RPGs or from Black Isle and Interplay. They come in and make a better version of Fallout 3. <laughs> a way better version. And half the time, much more interesting. Way more interesting. Better story because it picked up of things of, um, of, uh, of already written lore in something that is called Fallout 3 uh, Van Buren. For those of you who haven't seen it, you should read about Fallout 3 Van Buren lore. It's really good. And Todd Howard reportedly didn't like how well New Vegas was received. And, and it was received as a superior product to Fallout 3. And remember, Fallout 3 is the the benchmark it is the standoff product and new vegas is just a spin-off but everybody received fallout new vegas as a much better bet a much better uh, product with more things to do with better things to do right okay we we should take just a breather and reportedly tower tower didn't like it Reportedly. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised that certain uh, aspects of this new series, while it, it needed to be, you know, wrapped up for, uh, for the sake of being in a TV series, was actually pushed f by t the Todd Howard to spite the fans of Fallout 1, 2 in New Vegas. What's my biggest tip on cable management? Don't think about it. Just just put the cables on the side. <laughs> I don't do cable management. Uh, they do make 144 hertz TVs, I believe. I uh, I am playing as a rifleman. I still I'm more more than halfway on the on the campaign on New Vegas. I do need to get the the veteran. Uh, the veteran armor. I never got the veteran armor. I generally I don't like to play with um, with energy weapons, nor yeah, or nor big guns. I do have a lot of um, energy weapons. I should have done one thing though, that I kind of I, I kind of missed a lot of money, to be to be honest. So there's a part of the game where you can kill a faction that sells, uh, that has a store. If you want to stand up with another a character, this is in New Vegas. And those guys have a lot of expensive stuff in a store. And they have a lot of energy guns, energy weapons. And I didn't pick up the energy weapons and put them in storage. I already had the, the Lucky 38 at that time. I could have put like in storage. So I could sell it later. So do a, a few runs here and there. And then I forgot all about it. And, you know, half of the stuff that was in, in, in the bodies disappeared. So that includes combat armor. That is really useful, you know. <laughs> the thing about uh, uh, the repair system in that game kind of puts me off is that you can only repair with the kindish, the same kind of thing. Uh, some, some of the specials, you can do it below. That means that some of the armors and some of the equipment is incredibly rare to repair. So I don't use it at all. Uh, I do need to get um, 
a veteran helmet and a veteran armor. So that means because I, I don't want to use the uh, power armor because power I, I like to be kind of stealthy. And that's how I always play Fallout one and two, being uh, stealth, uh, doing sneak attacks and all of that. Um, kind of kills it for me <laughs> using power armor. You can do stealth in power armor. You lose agility, so you lose a little bit of uh, uh, of certain things. But it's kind of fun. And th that game is incredibly fun, though. So how many people are going to race now? We only had like... Oh, we have 31. I'll probably or be car 10 or something. I am car 4. What pressure on wheels do you run? Uh, trying to get 26.5 to 26.8, but it doesn't... Do it well. No, I don't play Fortnite. Fortnite is not something I'm interested in. Fortnite is not my thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, come on, man. Don't say that word like that. Let people enjoy what they enjoy. I don't enjoy Fortnite. I, I don't find it fun, so I don't care. When did I get into sim racing? I don't know. I don't care about Fortnite, so I don't speak about Fortnite. Roblox is banned, though, in my channel. Uh, right, we have 31 guys, and uh, everybody's going to be faster than me. <laughs> uh, I do like Minecraft. Minecraft is awesome. I've played Minecraft when it was alpha. I didn't start sim racing with the wheel. I started sim racing with the keyboard and mouse. <laughs> Sorry, with just a keyboard. That was what was available back in 1993. You guys don't understand how old I am. T300 versus DD Pro. The DD Pro is too expensive because it is PlayStation. Uh, T300 is cheaper. CSL DD would be the best bang for the buck unless you need a PlayStation support. DD Pro is not bang for the buck. I used to have like a bungee cord wheel uh, from SciTech, the R330 or something like that. Very bad wheel, but was kind of fun. Like, but what was available. Then I bought a G25, you know. The arcade racing was the ah, uh, it was different. It was arcade racing wasn't the go thing. It was completely different. We need maybe thirty nine forty two liters. PXN V nine is crap. Uh. Hey, Gilamot. Gilamot are the Trustmaster guys now. Gilamot owns Trustmaster. Back in the day, I used to have an Hercules. Um, Hercules graphics card. I, for I forgot, was it? There was the NVIDIA Riva TNT2. And at the start of the GeForce, the first GeForce that have ever exists. I don't think they use GeForce now as... Then we had the ATI. I uh, forgot which ATI it was. And then there was the 3DFX. And then there was another brand that did it. Uh, I think it was for, owned from PowerVR or something like that. That did an, ex an accelerated 3D that required their own API, which I owned. 
I should try reviewing their PXN 99. No, I'm not going to review anything from PXN unless they ask. Uh, which they asked, and then they bailed out because they understood that I didn't like their stuff. Because I think they're taking the piss of, Euro of European and North American customers. I haven't, honestly, guys, I haven't done a review in three months. And I don't think I want to do reviews anymore. You, you don't understand what's the, the kind of um, mental situation I am at the moment. I just don't care anymore. It's not worth my time. Can I call it me legend? You can call me god legend or whatever you want. As long as it's respectful. I don't care. You just don't understand how my mental... How I am, I am mentally. I just don't care about reviews. It's just... It's, it's too much of a, of a bother. Just recently, just uh, this morning... I was watching a video by Marquez, uh, Marquez Brownlee about um, about the criticisms he got uh, while doing the review of the the AI thing that exists now, and everybody was saying, especially a guy that I actually replied to, um, that oh you're doing this to kill companies, and I'm like. Nah, right? And they, uh, Marcus actually does a great video about it, about reviews. And it kind of reflects my positioning on reviews about not caring to do reviews anymore. Like opinion based, that's a review. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I just I don't care about the I just I just don't care anymore. Maybe in a few months I will care if I get something interesting to review. Like I I have uh, this example that I gave out um, like a few weeks ago that I I got a pedal set for review and it was so against my conclusions were so against from the start. I have I had very bad experiences from the start. I thought the, the the equipment to be completely appalling, and if I was going to do a review on it, it was going to seem mean, right? And I didn't want that at all. And I, I actually told the guys to their face, well, not to their face, but on email, that I found their equipment completely appalling in terms of use and quality and all of that. It was very well built. It just was bad to use. Everything. And I did a tweet on my... Uh, on, on Twitter, you know, saying, look, if I, I... For the first time, I stopped doing a review because I thought the reaction to it will be very bad because it goes against what everybody else is saying and it's going to be... It was going to sound be mean. And I was already anticipating flack if I did the review, like... Or you're just doing this exactly to kill the company because you're a shill for this company. And I just, I'm not there anymore. You know? That's not my... My mental state of being right now. I just don't care. If I receive stuff and I want to do, you know, on it because I find it fun or whatever, I'll do it. But then it stops being reviews. And I, I really think that this channel asked for reviews, it, it kind of died. There were a bunch of uh, threads in... Not threads. Uh, yeah, threads in, in Reddit. On the Sim Racing Reddit. And then comments that I've received about certain things. And I'm I just, I just not there anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to respond to that, Pillowcon. I, I know exactly what you mean. If you want to buy good uh, good pedals, budget pedals, Fanatec CSL Elite V2s. Everything else that is, like, over that, they're not budget anymore. And there could be... And there are much better pedals than those that I just mentioned. At more expensive, but they are not budget anymore. 500 budget, 500 isn't budget. 
It's mid it's mid level play, but it's not budget. Nah, I'm not gonna drift back in anymore. Guys, after this one, we're still gonna do one race, and then that's it, because these races take a, a two-hour slot, and then at four o'clock, actually three o'clock, I have to pick up my daughter, you know, and I have to <laughs> take her to class, a class that I really hate because it takes all the time of my life, which is swimming class. I kind of wish we could do it like before, in the before times, just pick up a kid, throw them in the lake, and... If he survives, he survives. <laughs> Fanatec reposted my content. Great. What what con what content was reposted? Oh, I actually rejected uh, doing a review of one of their stuff. Uh, their uh, sim rigs, or one of uh, their sim rig, the CSL sim rig, because I couldn't deal with the process of doing the review of a sim rig, and also I couldn't deal with the flag, with the flag of just oh. Why are you reviewing the Fanatec stuff? I, I can't. I can't anymore. I can't. Really can't. I, I really can't right now. <laughs> just, I just can't. Like, why are you reviewing this? When they, they haven't sent my thing that I, they were supposed... I can't do anything about it. I just... I, 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 I'm not in that mental place. How old is she? She's seven. Oh, that was fast. I care what about others say, man. After a while, I stopped caring. I, I, I didn't care, but it starts biting into you. And it's not a, now about uh, how uh, about what others say. It's just I just don't care. I don't care about the situation. I just don't want to to engage with it. That's how I think about it. I don't have to engage. Very many years ago, I done a, I've done a post saying that if people continue to say what they say about reviews when there's nothing wrong with them, what that creates is a situation where uh, content, uh, content reviewer, uh, sorry, uh, product reviewers or content creators will stop engaging, and then the space will have a vacuum. And that vacuum will be filled with people that just don't care about being fair or, or actually following the law or having, you know, any scruples about the situation. And the content space will change and you'll be none the wiser. And it's already happening. I, I can already see it. For example, if you are one of those persons in the channel saying, oh, you get a lot of money by doing the reviews, you have no idea what, what you're talking about. And another thing, most of the sales aren't made by reviewers when we were talking about content creators. If I wanted to really make money bank out of this shit, what I would do was uh, redo this living room so I can just post content of me driving it, putting on an Instagram and, and putting links to the description. What, it, what would end up happening is instead whenever I do a short, if I do at maximum 100,000 views, I would get 10, 000, uh, 10 times more of that, or 100 times, like 10, uh, 10, 000, uh, 10 million views or 100 million views, and I would rake in commission. But I'm not doing that. You know, because I, I do have myself some, you know, set of scruples. I don't want to deal with that. So many. So many guys on, on Instagram, TikTok are affiliated with this. They make a lot of money. They don't have to deal with the shit, you know, of, you know, putting themselves out. They put just fun content out. They will rake the, the sales and they don't have to deal with any type of criticism.
I don't know who's Daniel Owen. That's that's basically it in terms of sim racing. The money on sim racing isn't in the reviews. And the money and the affiliate links aren't not on the reviews. There's more money to be made if you are like a big streamer or a big content creator that does shorts. That's what I have to say. Can break later. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man, it's just just the way the market deals with. And it's also... Guys, it's also going to happen this way. Um, I think in 5-10 years, reviewers will be very little in the space. Because the companies themselves, they don't want to deal with the process of being, you know, under fire because their product underdevelops or under, prom uh, under delivers over and over promises. So they will just give it to, you know, influencers instead. And the influencers don't need, don't even need to speak about the product. They, they'll just show you using the product. Oh, look how cool it is. And because it's just a, you using it, they don't need to mention anything that they find out. You know, this is the future. So if you are m bitching about some reviewer, you're kind of missing the plot. And you already just see it, especially in the space of uh, like makeup and stuff. That's it. That's the influencer space. The PSR V2 is good, but it's limited, right? And I, I think I was the only guy saying I wouldn't use it and I wouldn't buy it, even though I said it is good. Because I just can't deal with VR anymore. <laughs> it's just boring. <laughs> oh, reviews on guitars, I don't know. No, I don't think it was. I, I got really good performance out of it. I think it's 90 hertz or something like that. It is really good to, to, to use, you know, but it is novelty. That's the problem with VR. Especially for the context of sim racing. A lot of people swear by it. I, most people actually do not keep it up. Because it is not as practical. It's not the case of uh, just setting it up and forgetting like it is with the monitor or a TV. You know? Well, that's almost a dub. And I love this setup. The eSports setup they have, it's too edgy. Like, oh my god, I'm like 17 and I make edgy jokes. Kind of edgy. This one is easy for a grandpa like me. Though I'm affiliated with Imo. MSN Messenger. It was so good, right? Oh, yes. What setup? It's a Hymo setup for the car, for the Ferrari. The problem with IMO setups is that the, the fast ones, most people can't drive it, and that includes me. That includes me. It may be in some, in some places. Exactly, Nicholas. That's how I basically got a date with my, my wife.
bad exit. Well, tire pressure is a bit too high. We need to maybe four or five clicks. Four or five clicks on one side, four or five clicks in the other. Epa! That was the fastest I ever gone to that corner. It's very much on edge. Guys, if you're enjoying this, press like and subscribe to the channel. Could be breaking a little bit later there. Can I do a 12? I must say that the update that they got uh, really transforms the, the curves in this game. <laughs> this physics dampening update was really necessary. Oh, no! No! No again! Very no! Incredibly very no! Damn it! That was an 8... 813 in a bag. Damn it, guys! I had an 8.13! This won't be enough for first position. Because, you know, there's people still going around. I could do another lap, but I don't have time. actually better than the other one. Actually, it's an 8 to 13. But I need to do 8 on 9s and stuff like that. Just just about Okay, so we need, we're going to do 57 and 57. I think that's enough. Four times three, it's 52. Uh, four times 13, right? It's 52. Yeah, 52. We're going to have 57 just in case. And then 57 will probably go a little bit. I survived Corona. <laughs> that's what I survived. <laughs> Oop, shouldn't see that. Actually, that's not too bad. It's just, it is what it is. Can do still 30 push-ups. That's not bad. 
I can't. Then again, I'm heavy as hell. I, I don't know how much I weigh now. It's probably 90 kilo. Eight laps is 105 liter. Probably is. So let's uh, add up. I have 114 liter just in case. I'm fine. I don't know what's a stone, dude. What's a half a stone? Is it a boulder? <laughs> I don't know what's a stone. <laughs> so I weigh three boulder, five stone. 16 pebble in 356 sand. That's how I see your imperial measurements, man. Kilo. Kilo is... Where is that? Yeah, and what the hell is a pound? <laughs> what is a pound? I don't know. Damn it. Starting second. Two point two pounds in a kilogram. Ha ha! You're no, it's not you Europeans. It's you consistently use a, a system that is not based on something that makes sense. You know, you cannot make any conversion with it. It's either base twelve or base fourteen or base six, and it's not base ten. It could be base twelve, but it wouldn't have to make sense. And you need to have something physical that you can transfer to it with a kilo. I can do a transference to something that is base 10 on distance or in volume. That's, that's why I'm, you know, I can transfer a kilo to volume. And with volume, I can add up the parts and transfer it base 10 to a distance if I want to. That's why... Mm, it kind of... Mm, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a lot, how I feel. <laughs> Man, I really like these gloves. I think I should not do a review, but do something on, on Insta saying, look, I do look like I like this. They're actually standing up be okay. Eh, a few things are in there that could be better, but, you know. The stitching is fine. Very breathable. Pence, shilling, and guineas. <laughs> Don't forget bar. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget bar. It is kind of interesting how different are tire pressures here in these cars to tire pressures in road on real road cars when the tires are cold. So you this you want 27. On 27 in a, in a road car, you have a flat tire. <laughs> well, almost. It's like, it's totally wrong. Totally wrong. And feet in a yard. And yards in miles. Nothing fits together. Paper sizes are also in inches internationally, but that's true. But there's something on a paper size, which is a double of each other or half of each other, like an A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. So you kind of understand it.
keep the good old lot. Ah. You do it on purpose, peoples. The Briffish do it on purpose. 760 yards in a mile. <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? <sighs> that does make sense. It's it's it rolls over the tongue. Just making sure that I do have my setup done. If you want strategy, 57, 57. Use current. I also should do a video about Norch life best practices. <laughs> 17. Oh, I have something to say about it. So in 1776, when they, well, was before that, uh, they started the whole rebellion because no taxation without representation. And America morphed 1776 to something to no taxation, no representation. It's fantastic. You really gotta gotta love the um, the mingling of evangelism or evangelical Christians with libertarians in how they infect the the social strata. It's incredible. No taxation without uh, with no representation becomes no taxation and no representation. Love it. Incredible. And they will still say, oh, 1776, the Boston Tea Party. Ah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Cabrero, 8, 12, 9, 6, 7. I just have a problem with Utah. What did the Mormons did to you? Gaga Takusha CC, bom dia. Como é que é? O meu nome não é Rui. Isn't like. Yeah, Utah has Mormons. Salt Lake City, especially. Ah, they're generally peaceful. They wear funny clothes, but they're generally peaceful. Well, they're kind of weird, but whatever. She's from Portland. From Oregon? Really? Really? <clears throat> we used to have uh, the Mormons in my own town, in Portimao. Uh, they had, like, the Latter Saints... Uh, Church just in front of my the primary school, and um, and uh, sometimes I used to go to a friend's house, uh, a fr uh, house of a friend of mine, which was just the other side of the road, uh, and they would come to me like when I was like ten or eleven, and it would say, "Hello, I'm an elder," and but the way they say it because elder is a Portuguese name as well, and I, um, hello, I am a Ricardo, and I would go away. It was incredibly funny, and it was. So funny to see how Americans didn't understand the joke because, well, they were not Portuguese. Rui, meu, que insulto chamar-me Rui. I am not a Rui. Generally, I have nothing to complain about the Mormons. Nothing at all. They wouldn't, you know, knock on your door. They would just, you know, go around dressed in white and black. That's it. Yeah, I know it's with an H, but it's the way they say it. <laughs> that, that was what was funny, you know? <laughs> because in Portugal, we don't say the H. Like in hotel, we don't say hotel, we say hotel. So there's no H. So Helder, Elder, and Elder, it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, guys, 
Starting very much at the front. Second second line. Hopefully we don't crash. We do some good bracing and finish a good position. Joseph Smith and all of that. Yeah. It's it's um very weird. I don't deal with religion. I don't I stay clear from it. it doesn't make sense to me. I never felt religious, even though I was brought in, you know, religious places and whatever. It never made sense. Uh, it always felt a, like a system of control because it essentially for me it is, it is what it is. And a lot of people that I've interacted with, especially at my hometown, uh, they weren't genuine about it. And I just couldn't care less. I tried to read the Book of Mormon once. Why? It's it's such a good thing made by the guys from South Park. <laughs> it's such a good thing. I should go to, to see the musical. Hello, Foxner. How are you doing? Such a good, good musical, dude. Hello. Na, 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 na. So who I have do? Okay, this this Lamborghini is gonna get me, and probably this guy's gonna have like a really good start. If I finish around fourth, fifth, sixth, it's fine. But I'll do my best if I can get like a first position. South Park TV made sh show make uh, not show. Uh, they made a musical because you have to remember. Uh, I forgot the, those guys. The name of the two guys, uh, tr not Trevor, whatever they are. Um, they they really didn't start with South Park. They they or they did, but they also have other things. And some of the things they have are incredibly funny. They make fun of Mormons. Uh, there's the, the one that. Is a Mormon that becomes a porn star. Uh, I forgot the name of it. And there's a, a song called Now You're a Main. Trey Parker, yeah. Main, main, main. <laughs> it's such a good song. Or is it called it Orgasmo or something like that? What is a main if not the power of his hands and his quest for glory? Ah, <laughs> so good. Yeah, Trey Parker and Matt, uh, Matt, not Matt, Matt Stone. Such a good song. They they are really great uh, songwriters. Apparently, when they both were in college, because they they went to college together, uh, they started writing musicals. And you know, South Park has South Park the musical with songs like "Blame Canada" and you know, "Up There, There Is So Much Room." Such a good song, such good songs. They also have other songs in uh, South Park itself. Then they have Team America, which is in in certain way also also has musical things. And they have the Book of Mormon, and they have all the good stuff. So. Guys, they, they are incredibly talented for uh, for musicals. Might get me on the inside. Yeah. Well, lost the position because, well, it's on the inside.
Why do I receive a penalty? Okay, let's try to get to those guys. We're losing too much time by, by defending against uh, Rafis. Goodbye, Cone. Goodbye, happiness. Oh my god. The car did slide a bit. I think the Beatles are overrated. Yeah, I understand what you mean. I really understand what you mean. Whoa! That guy almost lost control. Yeah. Yeah, the guy in front is losing control. Yeah. And the guy behind me, Strotterecker, is uh, applying some pressure. Cabrero is uh, kind of losing it, though. He's defending really hard for the start of the race. Incredibly hard. He's I had to, guys. I had to do lifts, otherwise, it would be very risky. Kind of lose the arrow as well. We might, if I am fast through the last corner, we might have an opportunity over at uh, Dottinger. If. 
But that means I need to get really close to him. Let's go for YouTube corner, not mess up. It's too wide. Still got it though. Here's the thing, I am staying behind him and we're keeping up with a uh, Woolney not like that though not like that though yes. I'll be free Thank you so much for being with me this morning. If you're enjoying the stream and my hand antics, press like, subscribe, and also become a member of the channel. Become a member. You'll help me out. You'll be part of the credits when the videos come out. It's just good, it's just good things, and you'll make me happy. I can drive the McLaren and the Lamborghini. Both of them are really good. I tried the R8. Couldn't. At this stage, I'm the fastest guy in the track. Pretty good. I can break even lighter than that. Yards a second. <laughs> oh, Rafis overtook him. So we did lose a couple of places in the beginning. We got those places back. We overtook for a second position afterwards, so we're one positive. And we're going for the going for the lead as fast as we can. See if we can really get there. Ah, not like that. Bad place to lose it, dude. Almost died. Okay, we're getting close to first position. Getting close, sir. Getting away from Rafis. We need to overtake. When we get to Woolney, we need to overtake him as fast as possible.
Uh, I don't know how I can do it as well. Uh, after four hours, I just get my my head blown in. Because it is it is incredibly taxing. Well, if you can, he can. Good for him. It is slightly disturbing, isn't it? Okay, guys, we're getting closer. We have very much the same pace. I'm just a slight bit faster. He's faster in certain places, I'm faster in other places. It's gonna be tight. So the place I need to get this guy is in the pits, actually. so much there Man the car is feeling really good Yeah, I think he is as well. Oh, we got a good exit there. Got a really good exit. So, we're gonna have two more laps. And then the next one, and then the next one. As long as we don't crash and we keep this space, it is ours. And we don't And we don't mess up the, the pits, of course. See how much he's doing. Probably 813, 814. 814. 8127.
He's not slow, though. My trust master looks amazing. Thank you. Oh, he's getting away now. He's getting... Getting away. Getting away, getting away, getting away now. Much better. Not perfect, but much better than the last lap. Man, he's picking up pace. He's really picking up pace. Now he's overdriving. I'm Portuguese. Let's go. We're in perfect position here. We don't have much Uh, dirty air to mess up. Man, he's really picking up the pace. I think you should go to Portugal, it's a nice place there. Uh, we need to hurry up. Pla Ricardo. And Oh, you're English. Don't you have like an art, an Irish identification card or something? Or in Ireland, you don't have like IDs. I know you're British, but you could have like dual nationality, and the second one could be like. Uh in Europe, you don't need a passport. You don't understand how this works. You just need a. You just need national ID, and that's it. Yeah, that's not enough, though. <sighs> you need either a valid ID card, as not an identification card, but a national identification card, 
like a citizen's card that Portugal has, for example, or you need a passport. Man, I'm driving as fast as I can. Now I have the effects of dirty air because air is so dirty. Oh my god, the air. You're so dirty. We need to keep this distance a little bit less when we get out to dotting here. Oh, he messed up. He messed up. I got a better exit, I think. Maybe not. Damn it! Oh, thank you. Woo! Not here, not in the south at the moment, but it could be. Skipping up. Go. It would be so much better than the last the last time I went around if it wasn't for that nasty bump that I had just there.
Okay, he's getting closer. Didn't lose much time around here. <laughs> messed up, messed up. I can't believe it. <sighs> Went in too hot. Why do I have a yellow flag? Next guy is pitted. Thank you, Daniel Msiz. Obrigado. Yeah, that was a bit slow. Okay, we're gonna do pits. It's actually keeping up through this section. Ah! No! He's gonna overtake me on a, on a straight. He's gonna overtake me on a straight. Okay, this was better than the other one. Oh, that's nice, David. Congrats, I guess.
Oh, he's gonna overtake me. Maybe not. Tem tudo. Tem tudo. Not sure if I if it's gonna be perfect, but <sighs> wow. We got a couple of seconds on Woolney. Woo! We got eight seconds on Woolney. First. We were already first at the end of the race. Uh, actually, we we're second, but the guy in front didn't didn't pit yet. So we're, we're essentially first. Also, hello, Aiden, how are you doing? Guys, if you're enjoying this, press that like button and subscribe. Let's get to 100 likes if we can. Though we need to all but because we don't know if that guy is going to be faster after the, the pit. And with a bit of luck, we get to 3000 ELO today. Been a while since I've been since we've had three thousand yellow. Now we need not to crash. Starkbacker needs to go to the pit soon.
Bad. We're dropping. Yeah, we're keeping up more or less the same uh, distance to Volney. Is it Volney or Volney? And I can't believe I d done it at 8.12. Hey, Lori! How are you doing, uh, Lori, my honey? Potato! Oh, that was fast. At work office today. And you're watching me? Oh my god, such a voyeur. Okay, so it's well neat. Okay. It could be like Irish, you know. It, it's written Wolney, but it could be pronounced Shershi. Or whatever. Or Maeve. Do you know what I mean? Lawrence knows what I mean. I'm actually okay. I don't I don't think I'm too bad. Need to concentrate in this area, guys. Sorry. So the next guy went to the pits. Or is going to the pits. He's not going to the pits? Where is he gonna be though? What? It was like 20 seconds back? No way. Is he gonna be first position? No, he's not. 
I was thinking, whoa. How is he second position though? Didn't he take tires or something? I'm not sure if it's mine. The guy is catching up, really. And he has cold tires, unless he didn't go for, for new tires or something. I don't understand. There's still 15 minutes to do this. If Wolny has uh, better, you know, speed, he can get to, to Stuttbecker and they fight between themselves. Oh, that was good. Okay, P1 overall, 45 minutes in. <laughs> I don't know. Still sticking up there. Uh, because we went to the pit last lap, this one isn't. Uh, the, the previous one wasn't validated, so there's no predict. Uh, there's no predicted lap after. Uh, you know, when you go to the pits, it resets. But that's essentially it. When you go to the pits, the it goes back to zero, and you need to do a clean lap first. Wolny is actually picking up pace. No problem. What happened to Volney and Shortbacker? Something happened between them? I want to see that. We need to register after. Yeah, they really have done. Hello, BRT Cobra. Long time no see. Yeah, I kind of see. Kind of feels like it. But Volney is actually catching up. He's as good pace this time. Uh, 
at this place you won't catch me, but you could get the best lap, you know? And that would be a shame. Bom dia, Helio. Como é que é? Man, this car with with the safe setup of IMO, it's so good. And there's so much there for this uh, car to even improve. You know? Yeah, it is. It is the best version of, of Nord's. And I, I don't think there's somewhere something close. Got two more laps, guys. Two more laps. And we have fuel for two more laps. Do we have fuel for... Yes, we do have fuel. We're going to have 10 extra. Fourteen one. What a great lap, though. And we have to remember, guys, I'm, I'm actually incredibly slow. Uh, generally, they would be posting 807s, 808s for race. Maybe 810s, depending on conditions. But I've improved a lot. I know probably tire, uh, probably conditions are really good now for for pace, but it's, it's an, in, an immense improvement, you know?
some more. It's catching up. It was actually a second faster over uh, Nurburgring. He's keeping up, Wolny. He's really keeping up. I messed up, I messed up. Oh no. <laughs> Two tents lost there. Bad line through there. I have to retry LMU. I haven't tried it in a while. Man, he's really good pace now. Nah, Bradbury. I like. I like to see where people are pacing. It's just for the sake of keeping it entertaining, I guess. That's that was good.
wasn't too bad. Let's go. One more. Sorry guys, I'm trying to concentrate. Oh my god. driving this Oi, 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 oi. I see what he mean, Pelican. I think next we're gonna do a, little, a few more. I'm definitely overdriving this thing. Why is my car not centered anymore? Why is my dash not centered?
Okay, now that's set, stressing me up. No, it's game as well. It moved the center. It's like 30, 40 centimeters off. Not sure if it moved in, in just a movement, but I'm, I'm just noticing it now. Slow. I need to change the, I need a button to change the the thing No, I don't have cam button. There's a this is a bug that happens to me a lot at Nords. It's likely the reason why I'm losing so much apexes. It doesn't make me faster. It's actually the way I ran around. I'm losing all my sense of apexes because the car is not centered in visibility that you remember, you know? Does it reset when you, uh, when you cycle the cameras? I don't have the, the reset button right now. I don't have the reset button right now and I'm not going to pick up the... I'm, I'm losing completely the, the sense of speed because of it. I know it's F1, but I don't have the keyboard right here. Yes, I had it bound on my wheel, but I did change wheels, and then you do have to rebind stuff. So it's not bound right now. Yeah, so essentially I'm losing with the limits of the car, because you're used to some, some limits. Oh, it does reset. It's like a Nate 20 right now. Last one. Yeah, it's a really strange bug. I did a 814, I did a 818, that's why it caught me. 125 ELO only? Boo. Let's go on a replay. Actually, we need to close this sh this stuff. I want to know what happened here. Was it here?
Oh, it's not this one. It's this one, right? Let's see. Ethan, yes, I did win a race. Didn't win a race. Okay. Yeah, that car is having trouble. Absolute trouble. Let's see. Is it there that he dies? He has a deaded death. He becomes deaded. No, it's not there. He's definitely catching up. Catching up. Also, thank you very much, Kagatax. Thank you very much. Oh no! Did he wall ride? He did wall ride, didn't he? He lost the rear. Jesus, take the wheel. So good. Let's see. What do you guys think of the the, the thumbnail for the, the stream, guys? What do you think? I hope you liked it. Very good. Really good. So 10 a.m. done. Let's see how many cars we have for the next one. I'm just going to take like a breather here because it's taxing. You know, doing one hour, it's really taxing. Let alone two or three. Like some streamers do. Or four or five or ten or billions. What the hell? You only drove it once? Boo! Okay. We have 42 people. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do in a second. Just gonna check out how many people are, uh, who, who is racing here. Okay, there's Dan Suzuki, Hans Nord. I'm car number 11, so it's not bad. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We need to do a good qualify. It's gonna be interesting, guys. It's gonna be interesting. There's uh, a few fast guys. There's Gataga as well. 
Nord, Jung, who else? Rory is, is there too. And I think we are going to be 3,000. I, I think we can get gold plus soon enough. <sighs> if we can get gold plus, it would be really cool. Let's find a, a, but, a button there. That I really need the button. Options, video. No, controls. Controls. Uh, where is it? Change. Cycle. I wish we, we had like um, a place where we could search for a camera. Cycle camera, here it is. 25. And also, for example, this is the 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 issue with the HUD in, in, in Assetto Corsa. If you go to controls, everything that you, will, you do here gets automatically accepted, right? You just press escape. But if you go to the video or the audio, everything that you do needs to be applied Mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. It's not like the other places. Also here on the assistance, on the HUD, but over here at the controls. You can do all the changes and you don't need to apply. Uh, confirming that I don't have any... Uh, no, I don't. Everything is fine. It's kind of uh, disconcerting in my opinion. Taking a second off, it's good. I don't think we're going to be able to get anywhere close to the result we got because, you know, everybody is driving now. It is much, much faster. <laughs> much, much faster. And we got to 3,000, but we need to get to 3,200 ELO right now. That will be good. If we get to 3,200 ELO, we got gold plus. Yay. How many GT3s? GT4, one GT4, one GT2, and one TCX, one cup. There re there's really no, no reason why. When there's no nobody racing, there's really no reason to, to go to, the, to anything other than um, to GT3s. It's, a, it's sad. It's really sad. It is really, really sad. Everybody goes to the GT3s because, you know, it's fun and all of that stuff. Nobody goes to GT4s or GT2s. GT2s are really fun. There's only five GT2s at, at GT4s at the moment. No GT2s and no TCXs and no Cups. So you got... It's hard. Oh, Stefan Key is, is over here too. Can we get better than like 10th? Top five would be so good. But all of these guys are fast as hell. Also, when it, is Assetto Corsa Evolution coming out on um, Early Access? Does anybody know? No, 
Nobody knows when AC starts. It will be interesting to see if uh, people leave all the Seto Corsa or just forget Seto Corsa evolution for a while. If it doesn't have like mod support or anything like that. If it doesn't have mod support or the mods aren't easy to integrate, I'm not sure if it, it's going to pick up for a while until until there's like a critical mass. So of course the competition it was the same thing. Not a lot of people wanted to race on it until you know mid 2021, something like that. Then it started to pick up. Uh, let's go. Okay. Four more minutes. <sighs> also, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow it's going to be Imola for, uh, for Pro, for LFM Pro. Not sure if I take the Ferrari or the McLaren. I need to check out tomorrow and not sure when. Oh, it's 7 p.m. Not sure if I can because it's, it's a bit too early for me. If it was at 8, it would be possible. But at 7, it's very hard. That's why I never do like uh, these races. It's really difficult for me on a pro series. I have to cook, I have to do all of the stuff, and you know the kitchen is still being done. I want to do the pro series, you know, even if I'd suck at it, I want to do it. Like I want to do other, other things like, um, what's the name of it? The ACC Drive Endurance, I would love to do that. What is on the ACC Drive Endurance? Let's see the next races. So we got Spa, Branzach, Silverstone, Red Bull Ring, Paul Ricard. Ew. I like it. They call it the parking lot, and they put literally a parking lot in front of an Aldi. It's so funny. We got Nurburgring, Suzuka. Tonington Park, Zolder, Kialami. It finishes with Kialami. Duo Cup on Mondays every two weeks. Yeah, but uh, I don't have like anybody to duo, and it's it's difficult for me to duo as well. Split one twenty three forty five. It's not as strong, but it doesn't matter if people are faster. Stefan Key is using the Lexus. What a chad. I like this. This is what, what it should be about. He's driving the Lexus. His best lap with the Lexus is 813 in qualify. And 813 in racing. It's this guy is a chad. Stefan Chadkey. <laughs> One thirty on Valencia. He's doing Porsche, Circuit of Catalonia, one forty four, fifty three on Paul Ricard, thirty in Kialami. That's good, man. It's really good. Uh, Mount Panorama, two minutes. Pretty cool. Nurburgring. He's not that fast at Nurburgring. Spielberg. I haven't done Red Bull. And in Suzuka, he never qualifies. Also, let's check out when uh, when are those duo things. 
GT3 to driver seems 60 minutes. Only 60? It should be two hours, though. This should be two hours. So you got one split and another split. Instead of, like, doing a race that is 60 minutes and you just do a 30-minute split, you know? I think the Duo Cup should be two hours. The Sprint Cup should be 60 minutes. Emo, emo. <sighs> All righty. Last race of the day, guys. Hopefully, it's a, it's a good one as well. Fuel strategy. We need, like, the 44. It's going to be cold. I'm going to do five all around. It's going to be cold. It means it's going to be fast. Man, seeing Stefan with that... Fills my heart of incredible pleasure. Do you know what I mean? The Lexus needs a revival. It still runs in IMSA. Sadly, uh, Toyota is stopped producing the Lexus, the, the RCF. They stopped producing a lot of things. And it's sad because they could have a good sports hybrid. But unfortunately, I'm not there to, to put some sense into them. <laughs> a sports turbo hybrid would make sense. That's what I say. You know, a battery for just 40 kilometers, something like that, gives you a good boost. But the gears... Completely catered, could be CVT, but the gears completely catered for uh, highway driving. But the thing with Lexus is that since the cars are so heavy because they are luxurious, not a lot of things they do make sense. And unfortunately, all the regulations, because, you know, safety and everybody goes in the goes over, over it, I think, uh, way too much, making the cars incredibly uh, heavier, paradoxically less safe. Makes it uh, a bit of a nuisance, I guess. Heavier cars, less fuel efficient. You know what? You know my position on it. Less efficient cars means they they use more materials. The only car that kind of broke the mold like that was the new Suzuki Swift. It's lighter than the previous version by 20 kilos. I think there's a need of new material uh, evolution in, in car construction. So that even cars like uh, electrics, they can, you know, get better range with the same batteries because the cars are wider instead of weighing 2300 or something like that for a Model S. That, you know, makes the car have less range because the cars are so heavy. Now, in my opinion, this is where AI would come in trying to get new models for the cars, new ways of creating car parts. That's what the, the AI should be for. Also, boys, come on, let's go. Come on, come on, confer. Confer, va lá, crawling. Que que tá Car on the left. Clear on the left. Oh, Kostinger, pá. Kevin Kostinger, pá.
Man, the Mercedes seem to have like a, a good power. Seems to have like good power out of the corners, good grip. Seems seems quite good. The Ferrari doesn't seem to put so much up, but it, it goes very well through the corners. The problem when people actually do that, you know, keeping uh, keeping a lot of traffic behind you, is that now that we're going towards Nordschleife, they want to start a lap. We will we'll go uh, another way because we are in the middle of the lap. You know can be quite uh, difficult because if we have traffic in front of us, we can't really go there. The streams cross over. Fortunately, it's not happening right now. And the car has an immense drift. gonna be stuck behind this guy i probably need to kill my speeds when we go to dottinger or at the end of the lap and probably get like one or two guys behind to go because you know i'm he's killing my speed he's killing my funk you can't kill the funk Guys. He's too slow. This is qualify. I shouldn't bully him for a mistake. But it is what it is. He's incredibly slow and he is uh He's making himself slower because of me, and I'm making him myself slower because of him. So it's one of those cases, just let the other person pass because they're faster, you know? Get to a place, just lift it, you have another lap. He's touching everything, he's completely over driving the car. While at the same time not being particularly fast. I've been doing stuff. Doing stuff is good. You're just like Ken. You're good at doing stuff. I'm just Ken and I'm Ken enough. And I'm great at doing stuff. What a great song, dude. What a great song. Man, that car has a lot of power over the over the mountain. Look at that.
I'll have to wait until the Huttinger, until I can overtake him. If I can, because that car has such amount of puff. It's a bad, bad lap, you know. And now we have crawling or whatever. This is like an 8.17, 8.18. It's not acceptable. And now he also has the DRS. Of course he does. I won't be able to overtake him. Look at him. Now I have to overtake Crawling or whatever his name is. So we don't have a clean lap. Guys, we really had to. So we're going to be incredibly slower compared to the last lap at, uh, at the mountain. But we're actually going to be okay. Yeah, we're a lot of seconds off. We're gonna be okay in it. Exactly. Let's go! The track is incredibly fast! I 
I'll be slow also in dotting here. Because, you know, I'm not going to have the push. So, we'll probably do an 813. Not too bad. If we don't mess up too much. Up. Darn it. Uh, we're going to do 23. That's it. Guys, uh, we're going to all. Man, we're, we're doing so great. Yeah, it was just a small bump. It was more than enough. Okay, let's do it. We're probably gonna lose like a lot of time on the straights, but at least we can finish one. And hopefully take two seconds out of this because there's definitely two or three seconds that can be gained. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Tires are perfect. Car number one is just in front. Or rather, the first position is just in front. So he should have some clear... Should have some clear air. Behind us, nobody is going to catch us, I think. And that's good, that's good, let's go.
Ah, that's not so good. I'm gonna do a 13. Oh, that's good. It's a good, good corner there. Not mess up now. Well, they have to wait a lot for me because I'm, I'm supposed to one of the last cars going around. Oh no! It's a GT4. Damn it! And it's gonna be exactly where I don't where I don't want him to be. Car on the left. Be on the left. Okay, it wasn't too bad, but Well, because there's been seven or eight years between the track in Assetto Corsa and this one, the track does change. Gets paved, repaved, and even this version, which is the most actual version, it is not as it is right now because they have repaved the area around the foxhole. for the GTS. Obrigado. Not as fast as it could be. That was that wasn't that good, and we're gonna lose like a lot of time over that thing or or. Maybe, maybe. 
The track is really fast. That's a really good Kleinus Caruso. But over here, I'm gonna lose quite a lot because I don't have uh, on a partial. I mean, because I don't have the the draft. Not bad. I'm gonna jump a lot. I'm actually gonna jump a lot. So they're doing eight six. Ah, almost a ten. Almost a ten. Ah. Guys, I need to go to the toilet. What a lap! What a lap. What a lap. I'll be right back. What a good lap! My fastest lap. Yeah, P5 would be great, but it's a, it's very hard to be to keep P5. If I keep, you know, at more or less where I am, it's gonna be awesome. So tires are actually pretty good. So we're gonna do the 57-57 again. Using the same pressures and yeah, we'll do the 57-57. I don't want to run any risks. If you guys are enjoying this, if you are, press like, subscribe, become a member of the channel. Blah, blah, blah. The front is Austin Martins and a lot of Ferraris. And then we have the, the Lexus of Key at night. Oh, look, a Key is going to eat by, uh, probably two or three people, if not all the Ferraris at the start. Win, I'll try. I'll try to be, you know, top five would be great. It is feasible, I guess. It is feasible. Do you want, guys, uh, regarding the the stream thumbnail, do you want the channel to have going forward that kind of uh, look for thumbnails, streams or not? Yeah, 
if it's like I, I can redo a few of, uh, of the reviews on that thumbnail art. Thank you, random guy. Random guy on the internet. Thank you. You're, that's very random. Looks pro. Yeah, I know, right? It was taken out of a, a Akira poster. If you guys remember the, the Akira um, movie. The guy that does the voice of, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, the protagonist is the same voice that did uh, Leonardo in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animation back in the 80s, in the early 90s. Same guy, believe it or not. Okay, one Lexus, one Honda, everything else is Ferraris. Porsches are really popular in BMWs. Wow. Oh, look at that. Absolute Motorsports, SRP. It's the, the pedals you see over there. It's those pedals. I have those pedals. They're pretty nice. Uh, I wanted to put them here, but I would have to move the, the, the pedal plate a lot. So I decided not to because the pedals are really long in a very different sense because generally the pedals are more biased to the br uh, to the back. But because those things use pistons, um, th the pedals are very much biased to the front. The pistons are huge. I really like the pedals and they have a new piston, which I would love to try. But I can't. I, I, don't, want, I don't want to do more reviews, at least for the time being. I'm really enjoying the Imsim Talentos, you know, you get them, what's going on. Stay in double five. But I really like David. David is the, the owner of SRP. David is an excellent dude. If you go to Sim Racing Expo, go say hi to him and really check out the pedals. I think you're going to like them. It's, they are very, how can I say, they are very immersive. They're incredibly immersive pedals because the, even though they are not hydraulic, they're pneumatic and it feels like a brake pedal. And it's incredibly clean the, the way the, the throttle is. It's super smooth, so don't feel anything. Well, that Mercedes is gonna have like a good start, I guess. Well, personally, I want to have a good start as well, a good race. No crashes with anybody, nobody crashing in a race. And I just went, you know, on pace alone. We'll see. People are inc very, you know, sweaty at the start, including myself. Very aggressive. You have to, you know. Not too bad. I did lose a position, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna lose a position, that's fine.
Saw that movement? No way, no way. It was super clean. Stop complaining about it. It was a clean movement. It was a clean movement. I'm not gonna let him let him pass. Clean movement. Didn't touch you. Not sure what what are you complaining about? And we keep fifth. That acid had a really bad start because he was third or even first, I guess. The Aston's had a really bad start. The Mercedes, everything that is naturally aspirated in this game has such an incredible pace at the start. And it tracks like this, where you really need to be in front of everybody. It is so important, so important. You know, now where's the thing about the Aston? It's also super fast. <laughs> look at the speed at the straight line. Look, look. I can catch him. I can catch him. What is this? How do you join like that? <laughs> now I have Stefan Key behind me. Or is it Chinos? No, it's Chinos. You saw that? So dirty! And the Ferrari, you know, kept on the right. Because, you know, uh-oh, there's no space. And the, guy, the two guys just join in like, oh, there's nobody in the track racing with us. Guys, it's incredibly tense. And the, um, the dashboard is moving to the left. The dashboard is moving to the left. We need to find a straight line speed. We need to find a straight so we can go to, to reset the dashboard.
They're strong there. No! Yeah, it's moving totally to the left. We need to restart the the dash. We need to <laughs> cycle the cameras. That Aston is definitely going to overtake. I'm too far away. Do I have any damage? No damage. Gonna put like tire sets eight just in case. Yeah, the Asin just overtook him. There's nothing that the Asin can do. Not the Asin, uh, the Ferrari can do. I need to ride more than the interior car, but I'm scared, you know? Sixteen, eight, eighteen, nineteen. Well, it's the first lap, so it doesn't matter much. Oh, that's too deep. That's what she said. Oh, the Lexus is going to be behind us. I don't like it. The Lexus is incredibly good. See if we can get to Kijinami. Man, the Lexus has really good pace. If Stefan overtakes him, or if it takes me, I want you guys to clap, okay? As long as it's, you know, clean and whatever. I want you guys to clap because he's driving the Lexus, okay? I don't want him to overtake me, but let's, let's root for Stefan to have like a, a second position finish so I can finish first, yeah? I want that because Lexus are bay. We all agree? I think you're all enthralled about the race. Can't blame you. That Hassan is doing like really good work. Man, that Aston is is going. Oh, he went too hot. Kijinami is also really going. What the hell? Oh, 
Oh, the Aston made a mistake. Kijinami getting really close now. Oh, and I made a mistake as well. Slidey, slidey. I think over here I can really break plates. Oh my god! Oh, Kijinami going at it! Pasenko! Keeping it in me, he did a push over. He pushed the guy over, didn't he? He didn't even a little bit of a push. Need more arrow. Too close to him. And that Aston, when it gets space, it's, it just goes incredible. And you have to think about this, guys. We're going so fast that our pace is about 8.11, 8.12, fighting for position. Okay? I never had this. I never had this. This is incredible. I'm gonna lift, I don't wanna overtake him. It would be too dangerous over there. 811, guys. 811. Pace fighting for position. 809 for the first guy. 
8.11.7, Incredible, incredible. Oh, once again, I went too deep. That's what she said. And my race pace is higher than my qualify race, my qualify pace. Dude, I'm enjoying this race. I know I'm slow compared to the guys in front, but I'm doing definitely my best here. They're making mistakes. They are overdriving. They are incredibly fast. And I'm just here to, to see what I can do, you know. Hope you're enjoying this, guys. If you are, press like. Let's get to 100 likes. Let's go. Kijinami is probably Japanese and he is having lots and lots of lag. Oh, I went very wide, very wide, very wide, very wide. Very wide. Let's go. Don't tell me this isn't one of the best March Life races you have seen on LFM for, you know, for the dailies. Because I think it is. Kijinami is having issues and he's gonna kill me. Ay, 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 caramba. Come on, pick him up, man. Gonna be trouble. I have like mo half a second somewhere, but unfortunately I can't do anything because Kijinami in front of me. I do need to overtake him on 
Watching her. Understeer. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna always be stuck behind this guy. Podium, let's go! Let's get to the guy in front. That guy is fast. Man, that guy is fast. Guys, very difficult, very difficult night. Nightfall is now, is now, we are doing way better than I expected. Started fourth, we went to fifth, and now we're third. I don't care if uh, one feels more realistic, I drive to dr drive this. If you want to drive GT7, drive GT7. Realism is over, over rated anyways 810 810 811 9 again okay fit next Man, drive what you want. It's just a realism argument is kind of stupid. I have race drivers saying that it, it, it's overrated anyways. And, uh, oh, you have to have a super b stiff brake. You know, it's not true. Okay, can we do an A10? Because we're not gonna have Kinijima. Be honest. Ki Kijinami. Is it Kijinami? Sorry, not Kinijima. Stupid me. We might see Pasenko actually overtaking for first.
die so fast. Messed up through there. Yeah, it's it's whatever you like. Whatever you like most is the best for you. I'm in a phase in my life that I just don't care. If you like it, you like it. If you find it more realistic, it's more realistic. It's just whatever you want. I don't have base for the guys in front. Well, that was a bit too much, but we did it. Anyways. wasn't the best line, but it's the line we have and the line that we have to do stuff with it. Neither was this one. Well, it went wild and everything. Rob's is robbing us. Rob is doing really well. very good over there but so again it's what it is So fast. Is he getting to to Rob's? If I don't mess up in the pits, really important not to mess up.
Man, these guys are incredible. Okay, pit time, pit time. Pit, pit, pit. Box, box, box. Okay, we got 57. Dry, dry, dry suspension. We have no damage. So this is gonna be it. Okay. Wasn't too bad. What the hell is this? Oh, he's, he's one lap behind. I did get, get some time over Pasenko. In a lot of time over Kijinami. Let's not mess up, guys. Otherwise, we have this in a bag. Like a podium would be really good. Go. Trying to get to him, but he's getting into his pace now. Ooh. And that thing has so much puff, so much puff. It's not as fast in a, in a, in Dottinger, but it gets to the top speed really fast. driving extremely well all things considered this has been more or less a clean race 
There was that incident at uh, Aremberg, I think it was Aremberg, with uh, the Ferrari with Kijinami, not his fault, and but with the Mercedes and also the yellow Aston, apparently. That is likely to create a penalty, though. Because they both, both pushed in, so they could be both pushed in directly from outside into uh, the racing line. And honestly, that's a big no-no. And it's likely why also Rob's feels like he needs to push, push, push. Because if there's a penalty, it could be a 10, pe 10 second penalty. It could be a 30 second penalty. Mehul, thank you so much for the follow or for the, the sub. But I think Pasenko is not in any way, shape or form. Gonna be affected by my race now. Just need to do what we do until the end of the race and we bag this. As long as we don't crash, we should be okay. We have so much puff over the mountain. Incredible. Now the German rave parties are going to be around, yeah? Everybody come in, bring some beer. My best worst German impression. And some leather. We like when everybody is wearing leather. It's so bad, my impression, so bad. Hey James, how are you doing? Oh, that's a bit of a... Also, Thomas, how are you doing? Uh, I will, I will. Beer is lecker, yeah. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. Oh, this is bad. It's so bad. I'm doing great, man. I'm having a lot of fun at Nords. The Nords Live. It's, uh... Man, it, it, I've been enjoying the hell out of this. You know, it's been... Despite the racing here can be stressing, I find it relaxing. It's hard to explain. It's like a spa, you know, but not spa francochon. Speaking of that, I, I should go to Aldi one of these days and, and get some... some vice beer. Some wit beer, you know? I think it's the, some of the best things that are from Germany. It is actually the beer. Uh, I'm on split one. I'm actually on split one. We're doing very much okay. We got a position. Actually, we got two positions because the guy that is uh, on first right now hasn't gone to the pits. So we're doing okay. Yeah, split one can be great. Absolutely. So we got, we have the third.
I keep going too deep here. God damn it. It's about to flow. It is indeed about to flow. And the flow can be easily broken because of those wonderful grass areas and areas where you're doing 250 kilometers an hour and the rear just goes, you know? That's why I like it. It is intense. Yeah, they are, but uh, the engine is not very good. It's not very good for this. It looks great, but it really needs a really good computer, especially a good CPU. And it nords, it, it shows the optimization that uh, who knows has done in the game isn't really enough. That's why I've done that video about increasing FPS. Speaking of that, I, had, I did that video. Now I'm getting like 120, 110. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered, especially with AMD 7000, is that it's more efficient to do a uh, fixed uh, fixed uh, overclock than to use the PBO. Even though the PBO has better uh, frequencies, the overclock is much better. And it's cooler, and it uses less, it uses less uh, power. The problem is, this is why I really don't like one over the other, is that there are situations where the PBO should be activated, but to cap the consumption, because you really don't need the, the computer to, to rev, to rev, to go to 5.5 gigahertz, right? All the time. You could browse the internet, watch videos at, at almost laptop uh, power levels and, and they haven't done something like this where you can use both uh, an overclock and a PBO I can't overclock mine to 5.5 gigs without crashing, uh, but on a PBO it can for some reason. So what do I mean is that um, instead of using the PBO to let the um, let it do whatever it wants to do, I, use, I normally use PBO minus 30. Go to the overclock section and just put 5.4 or 5.5, whatever your uh, your chip allows, right? Uh, my random timing is his expo. I'm not. I don't have really good RAM. I have 5200 RAM with with not very good timings. Uh, maybe that's you know something to improve on because RAM does increase your performance up until 6000 on AMD's. But the the overclock, the static overclock, which I was that's why I was complaining about the PBOs are great when you're not when you're idling, it, it really drops the power, which is great. Uh, but when you're not idling, it feels like even though it's overclocked, it doesn't have the same performance as uh, the general overclock at every single core. You know?
ACC looks great. Yeah. But it could look better if it was a better engine. The engine makes everything kind of fuzzy. F1440p, it really looks great at 4K. But then it uses a lot of... No. At 4K. A lot of memory, which I, I don't want to. I prefer to run it at 1440p and not 4K. Which saves me a lot in, in you know, in performance. Have you done a wheel, a uh, wheel video for for this now? Aston is really going. For me, it, well, it really depends on what you have. Generally, it's it's a 30% impact, 20% impact, and sometimes even it's better than that because you use the LSS. If you have the LSS. If you have FSR, use FSR. I know it won't look as good, but you get like 20%. Man, Pasenko is really hauling ass. Two more laps, guys. Two more laps. Eight oh nine. I'm doing like eight twelve or something. Eight thirteen. Eight twelve. It's not deep. That's what she said. Best wheel settings, turn every on this game, turn everything down, damper, spring, turn everything down. Put the filtering very low. Leave the force effects and, you know, force feedback effects and all of that to maximum. Put your power at around 75 if you have like a good direct drive. Or 80, something like that. Then go to the, to the game, turn everything down on the game. Leave it at 35 to 45 gain. No dampening, nothing, and just put a little bit of uh, road effects. Then you have a raw, unfiltered force feedback coming from the game. I use that kind of thinking on every single wheelbase that I've reviewed. Camus, Mozza, Ace Attack. And of course, Fanatec, which I use. And it's incredible how good it is. Go. Ay, ay, ay. 
this lap. We have one more lap after this one. And I can't find any more Pasenko. Pasenko is just, is just gone. He's got three seconds out of us in the last lap. He's just gone. He's just over there. The thing why I put dampening and spring on is that this has already as gyroscopic effect. So it goes back to center. So we don't need more of that. That is going to dilute your signal, right? If you want to have like a, a feeling of, of going over the track, just put a little bit of road effects. I put it like less than 10%. You get a feeling of a mechanical drive inside. You know? If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Like everything, you know? That's how I like it, that's how I use it in every single... If I if I had another, you know, C-Magic or a Cube or whatever, I would do exactly the same. But then for a set of course, I do need dampening. He's getting there. Not sure if he can do it. Pemsk, uh, Pazenk, Pazenko, sorry. Not sure if he can do it, but uh, he's getting to first position. He's really getting there. Okay, we're driving through the night, boys and girls. And the reason why I do the force feedback as I do it in this game, it's because it's already so filtered. And when you remove everything, you feel the car coming from the rear, or you feel the, the, the front trying to go around, especially here, it's so important. So you can't, you are essentially mid corner, you're already predicting what the car is doing. And it's so natural because you don't have, you know, access to to the gyroscopic effects of your heads, because you're stuck in a... You're really stuck here, right? Well, that was Pasenko. So if you feel the front, essentially, if, if it goes over like a, a small um, a depression, you feel the front going over the depression. If the car is under steering, the car gives you that information. Guys. Guys, guys, guys! So excited! Second position right now! So good!
If we continue like this, second position top split. Uh, I guess the car control is about uh, keeping the car without sliding, but fast drivers use slide a lot of the car. You know? So that could be uh, an explanation, I suppose. So we're second, guys. We're second. Top split. And once again, I just go too deep. Yeah, I define this game as slip, hang slip angle hunting, you know? If you see the, the slip angle these guys take, it's incredible. Of course, it's not like R-Factor 2, but there's a, a specific way they position the cars and... I, I think I drive the cars to, as if they were two under steering. I don't like an understeery car, but I don't like a oversteery car. I prefer more to to oversteer than to neutral. Just a little bit of oversteer, that's what I like. I'm not nowhere close, Ethan. It's I appreciate it, but I'm not nowhere close. What are you doing? What is that guy doing? Hey, Mosur, how are you doing? Yeah, I think he took the wrong turn. And that is dangerous, because it could be an accident there. Unless you're really returning to, to pits with a broken car, there's really no point. Yeah, I, I would say I'm decent. Thank you so much for that, Ethan. I would say I'm decent. I have decent pace. And when I try, I have really good, really decent pace, but I'm still not there. Not esports. E Close your arms, kind of level. <laughs> <With what? laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Okay, on this lap, I really don't need to all but because they're 20 seconds behind. The guy in front is like 14. Do I have? There's really no point going for it. We can lower our pace a little bit. It can be like 80% of. Not 80, but about 
I'm really enjoying driving at night, and I'm, I'm really enjoying this TV, man. It was a really great decision. I, if I knew about it, I would, I would probably spend a little more and actually go for the OLEDs. Uh, not that this screen is bad, by, uh, by all means, but I would probably done a a bigger investment for for longer. You know, it's such a good experience driving with the TV. It's not a monitor, it's a TV. It's a LG QNET 55 inch. It's a regular TV. 120 hertz VRR. You do need VRR and you need low input latency. This has about 10, which is okay. It's it's another level. It's it's incredible how good it is. But the TV, Aiton, the TV is really in front of me. As in, it covers my peripheral vision pretty much completely. When you're focused, you don't see up or down. You don't see left or right. It's just there. And everything seems to have the correct size, you know? That's why I like it so much. Because it feels the, the concept of scale is there without yourself being in a, a VR headset. And I don't like being a VR headset, you know? I know a lot of people, oh, but there's better immersion VR. Yeah, there is, but it, it also comes with in incredibly bad issues that you need to go around it. It's it's stinky. It, it needs to be cleaned. It is hot. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm already too old for that crap. It's a QNED. Uh, QNED 81. 55 inch. The hell? Why are we watching yellow flags ahead? The hell? Did he just get stuck under the under the track? Guys, just a few more corners. Second position, let's do it. Confere, confere. I just need to lower the sim rig. I think I'm gonna remove the um, the wheels because the wheels aren't really adding anything to it. Guys. What a good race! Excellent job, man. P2. Well managed. Bring it back home safely. Congrats to Rob's dudes. He gave us no chance. Oh, what a good race. I want to see the replay, though. I want to see the replay of the yellow of the yellow cars. Let's go this one. So let's, it's this part I want to see. P5 is a good place. So is this. Awesome guys, awesome. Let's see this one. Well, what happened here with Rob's? Okay, lost control there. 
Actually, we're gonna change the car for the car behind. So we got the ass on over here. He's on the pounce. Uh, it's nobody's fault. Though Rob? Oh, Robbie Rob. I'm not sure about this. While it wasn't... Well, it was the guy behind, right? But Rob did push him. Hey, Eurofighter. It is because I had to remove the, the quality of the, the replay. Otherwise, this looks so much better. I don't know. Okay, this is definitely on, uh, on the Aston because he did go wide, but he's trying to rejoin and Rob just throws him in, in the middle of the road. So I'm not sure. Now, there's also something I want to check out. It's here and it's with me. I think it's this one. No, I'm here. So we're going to race against the white car. The white car started to give me lights, yeah? Because of this move that I've done. So I'm keeping here, not doing nothing wrong. See? What have I done wrong here? Let's see from his perspective. Let's see from his perspective. I'm this car, I'm the red. And I'm really at the, the left side. That cuts me over a little bit. Probably didn't break as well because of it. And he gives me lights. I don't understand why he's giving me lights. What have I done wrong there? Okay, let's see this again, but from another camera. Like from a TV camera or something like that. So, once again, I'm the red car. I mean, I'm very much to the to the left already. It's an incredible switchback. I, I mean, he has space on the left, on the right. I have, sp I don't have much space on the left. It is the only four five eight at the server, indeed. Incredibly clean, I think. You know, all things considered, it was just a small bump. He could have been, like, annoyed at it, of course. But it's not my fault, because I can go anywhere else. So, pretty good. Guys, incredible races today. Loved it. Uh, I'm still need to figure out why it doesn't the streams don't get more popular. Because we got top positions. It was fun. The race was good. It was generally very, very clean. Some of the cleanest races I've ever had. Uh, I think I wasn't a bad host, and I think we had all fun, I think. Well, in my opinion, I think we did. If you enjoyed this, press like, subscribe, and if you want to support the channel, become a member of the channel. We will be part of the credits when the videos come out. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye. And stream. And stream.